today I'm having back spasms. Hannah maybe has COVID and Sam just finished diving. So I don't know if we're all going to fall asleep like halfway through this recording or if it's just going to get progressively more unhinged. But I guess <laughs> there's only one way to find out. And welcome to another episode of Midlight Crisis, a real podcast hosted by three grown-up biologists revisiting books from our teens, and it's totally cool. I am one of your hosts, Sophie. I have been genetically recombined with a bird that has a superpower. And that bird with a superpower is a fishy ribbon dipper. (laughs) Fishy ribbon. (laughs) A fishy ribbon dipper. You know. What is fishy as a superpower? Yeah. Like a mermaid? (laughs) Or are you like conspicuous? Are you suspicious? suspicious. I think I'm just a little sus. I'm an imposter. Just a little (laughs) sus in everything you do? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So no one can tell if you're the truth or lying because you're just always a little bit sus. I'm just, I always look Uh at you out of the side of my eyes. That's (laughs) all right. It's a little fishy. Or maybe it's just accurate because a dipper is like the only swimming songbird. Oh, that's fun. Oh. And so maybe it's just literally just slightly covered in fish. <laughs> yeah, it just smells like fish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fair. Did I pick this one mostly just because Ribbon Dipper is funny to say? Yeah, I did. Thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who and what are you guys? My name is Sam, and today I am 2% genetically mixed with a wet cat kestrel. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Wait, is it a wet cat kestrel, or is it a wet cat kestrel? <laughs> I don't know, but my hair is currently wet, so I'm, I am guess well, I'm embodying yeah. this. <laughs> and are you mad about it? <laughs> Um, I mean, no. I mean, I'm cold because of it. <laughs> not mad, though. Again, not, not wet. means you're probably not a wet cat. You're a wet no. right. kestrel. I have seen cats on TikTok that enjoy being wet, so... That's true. It's it's not it's not common, but it's not impossible to find a cat that likes to be in the water. There you go. Yeah. Sophie, your cat got groomed recently. Does she like being wet? Uh, Based on the videos that they sent me every approximately five minutes during the process. Um, Not particularly. She didn't, like, appear to be, uh, like, vehemently against it, but she was definitely unimpressed. (laughs) She was also extremely stoned, so she might not have had the capability to be vehemently anything. Yeah, she couldn't, like, walk in a straight line, so (laughs) maybe that had something to do with it. (laughs) But she's so soft. So soft now. It's incredible. I do just need to figure out what wet is as a superpower. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Don't worry about it. You just secrete water out of pores on your neck constantly. Yeah, probably. (laughs) Wet all the time. Wet. That is problematic. Cut that out. No, (laughs) No, it's staying in because I'm making a reference to Mm. Team Moist. No. Team Moist. Oh. Really living up to Team Moist. <laughs> yep. By being a wet cat kestrel. Cat. I'm uncomfortable. Kestrel. Can we move on? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Hello. I am Hannah. Uh-huh. I have been 2% recombined with a shrinking microscope spoon bill. Whoa. Which sort of sounds like a henchman in a mad scientist lab to me. Yeah. Thoughts? Yeah. yeah. I agree. Great. Or like a Rick Moranis <laughs> movie. Oh, yeah. Honey, I shrunk the spoon bill. <laughs> 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 I loved that early 2000s movie. <laughs> it fits the time for sure. Yeah. So a microscope spoon bill. Yeah. I can see things real good. Yeah. Okay. Great. <laughs> Only small ones because I have to shrink to see them. Oh, you know? sure. Okay. Yeah. Like how uh, Ant-Man can shrink so far that he sees the little things. I think I'm that, but a bird. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> so you're you a spoon- quantum realm. Yeah. Quantum bird. You're a spoonbill who eats quarks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. The next nice. book in the Maximum Ride series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is the yeah. one where they go to the quantum realm. Yep. 
Can't Honestly, wait. if someone w- had told me that the like newest released in 2020 or whatever it was, Maximum Ride book was like, they all get shrunk super small and travel between the atoms, I'd be like, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been sitting here trying to think of Gas Man and the <laughs> the same <laughs> Ant-Man and the Wasp. Gas Man and the, and wasp. the rest. <laughs> the Fang. <laughs> Gasman and the rest. Yeah. Gasman and the egg. Then the egg. And the egg, yeah. And the egg, yeah. Yeah. I'll watch it. Me too. Well. Well, we'll see. I think I would, unfortunately. <laughs> anyway, the reason we've, uh, we have superpowers and our part bird and the reason that we're talking about Maximum Ride is because we're reading Maximum <laughs> oh, yeah. Ride. <laughs> huh? And as always, we have read... Four chapters of the book. So how about you guys tell us what happened in them? Well, the search for the Institute continues. Max contemplates whether she is going to die and leads the search uh, for the Institute into the New York sewer system. And lo and behold, it turns out the door to the Institute is in fact in the sewers after all. Hooray! Wow. Hooray. There's not really much else to tell you about these two chapters. Just a lot of Max fighting with her voice and yep. they uh they found a door yay wow yay thrilling i wish they found a crocodile mm-hmm. anyways that would Hannah? Have been good. be cool <laughs> yeah well the door into chapter 123 is locked of course uh, but ooh. luckily iggy is a master lock picker and gets that thing open lickety split uh-huh. also angel can read the minds of rats which is just kind of tossed in there and then <laughs> forgotten ignored <laughs> I have thoughts. <laughs> I also have so thoughts do and the rat. questions. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the bird kids descend the staircase into chapter 124, which leads them to a second door. They go through that one, which opens suspiciously easily, and through that a third door, through which they exit finally into the Institute, to which Gasman sensibly asks, uh, is that a good thing? <laughs> Yeah. Good question, <laughs> ass man. Yeah, great <laughs> question. We're all wondering the same. It's fine. It's fine. It's probably fine. Yeah. So as we somewhat exasperatedly predicted last time, they did not really leave the sewers for these <laughs> no. entire four chapters. <laughs> they did not. Just in like the last sentence. That doesn't yeah. count. That doesn't <laughs> count. Well, great news. You'll have a good guess when we get to the end of the episode. <laughs> wow, yeah. Wow. In my now standard way of just finding something in the first sentence or second sentence Uh to focus on Uh for way too long. Max is like following a map in her eyes. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like that's how they're finding their way. It's it's like it's it was as if I had a, a detailed map was imprinted on my retinas. Which is seems fine. Kind of convenient, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. So in like a normal way, I googled, is the phrase burned into your retinas like a real thing? <laughs> or is it? Because in my oh, head, yuck. I was like, well, maybe like, wouldn't it actually be like the lens of your eye? Because your retinas are what you're like seeing with. They're at the back. The back, you know? I, I find eyes and teeth and one other body part that um becomes relevant later in this episode like really unsettling to think about so i don't really know how they work well congratulations because you're gonna have to hear (laughs) about what i have to say about it okay i'll be back later Uh, okay (laughs) yeah have a nap or something i'll just yell no wait i can't do that damn it anyway it turns out it is correct oh you know the thing where you if you stare at something and then you look away you can see it imprinted like on your eyeballs yeah like a weird contrasting image, and then you're like, oh my god, I see this pattern on the wall still. So that's an after image, and it is technically in your retina, so... Oh. Max was correct that whatever she's seeing is imprinted on her retinas. However, an after image (laughs) that does not exist (laughs) is not technically an after image, because those are... It's a before image. It's a before image. I guess if it's like a normal after image then it's called an after image like where you're staring at something that has high contrast and then you stare at the wall that's like a normal thing but then you can also have like a pathological one which is called a palinopsia that sounds bad oh which i think just means like repeated image but they can like happen instead of like you look at the image you look away like they could happen like minutes later or hours later and it's just like why is this happening i don't know what's going on 
And then there's an even better one, which is called Ugh. a hallucinatory <laughs> palinopsia. Great. Which is where you are getting like a visual image without a stimulus at all. And I like was like, maybe I'll look into, again, trying to diagnose Max. What does she have? But like <laughs> all of these things are just like she has schizophrenia or she underwent some like wild drugs or brain issues. And I'm like, yeah, she's yeah an experimental child. <laughs> like, yeah, probably. Like, true. I'm I don't want to. This is just depressing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to leave it at. You know, whatever's in her brain is just like co-opting this thing, which exists. Okay. You know? I mean, that's yeah, cool. Yeah. So there's like a real thing that can happen to people. It's it's usually like pretty short term, but probably means there's something else going on. But the halluc- like a voice, like a voice, or like a lesion on your brain, <laughs> <laughs> which probably what the voice is. Yeah. Like I'm like. Oh, it it seems like this is usually, there are a bunch of different reasons for it, but they're usually always in conjunction with like a lesion in the like visual memory part of your brain from whatever thing. And so I'm just like, I bet she has a chip in her brain and it's made a lesion. (laughs) Yuck. Yep. (laughs) So she has a chip in her brain and a chip. Where was the other chip? In her, in her like elbow, in her arm. Ar- arm, yeah, somewhere in her forearm, I think. I think it's between the two bones in her forearm. Yeah, it's been so long. It's wrapped in all <laughs> kinds of important goop in there, so that she can't get it out. Uh huh. But I am continuing to push my theory that she has a brain chip, also. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would make sense. Yeah, of some. How kind. else is the voice getting in there? Yeah, because she's having either that or she's having auditory hallucinations, visual hallucinations. All sorts of hallucinations. All sorts of hallucinations. She's also having increasing paranoia through these chapters, understandably, I would say. Yeah, I should just say I did, while I was looking it up, all of these are also traits of schizophrenia. So yeah, Max could have a brain disease. Maybe they never left the AE school to begin <gasps> with, and it's all Whoa. just Whoa. simulation. <laughs> Damn. Whoa. Somehow that would be even more upsetting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One of the um things I looked up, I forget what it was now, but the one side effect of schizophrenia is that you have a higher, I forget, it's, called, it's like prior belief syndrome or something, where it's like, because schizophrenia affects your like perception of reality, whatever you believe caused something because of your like how your brain is working with schizophrenia, it like makes you perceive reality differently. Like it makes whatever you believe prior make it seem more likely that that's what caused something. So like Max being paranoid and like seeing erasers everywhere and then like erasers showing up. And her thinking like, oh, it's because the erasers have been following us the whole time. That could be <laughs> actually <Right>. just this. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> cool. Thanks for making this worse, Sophie. You're I well, yeah. I, d- I mean, the fun thing is, is that uh, she uh-huh. spells Confucius wrong, if that's something oh. you want. <laughs> Does she or James Patterson? <laughs> it can be both. Both things can be true. <laughs> yeah. Is there like an S missing or something? No, there's an extra O in it. So it's not even that like it's a Canadian oh. spelling. Confucius uh-huh. is just like <laughs> C-I-U-S at the end. <laughs> How embarrassing. That's not Confucius? No. <laughs> Interesting. I also don't really know why she's quoting a philosopher here. I did look up Confucianism. <laughs> it doesn't really uh-huh. make sense. Oh. <laughs> I mean, that fits with, like, a 14-year-old trying to be, like, cool and edgy being, like, Confucius. Yeah. Confucius. And not knowing anything about it. (laughs) Yeah. So I I buy it. The voice also seems like a 14-year-old in this moment, you know? Maybe it is. Maybe the voice is Ari all along. (laughs) (laughs) Eight-year-old. The voice is the friends we've lost along the way. Uh, If only they would go away completely. (laughs) 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 Why must they stay as a voice in my head? (laughs) The worst. Yeah, because Max asks the voice, am I going to die? And the voice is like silent. (laughs) And then it says... 
you're going to die just like everyone else. And it's like, okay, fucking thanks. Okay, fucking thanks. No, that's not what she meant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know you are, but what am I? Is like essentially uh, what <laughs> the energy brought I, here. Yeah, I would posit that um, the voice is probably the absolute most annoying yeah. character in this book so far. Yeah. You know what I just thought of? Uh-oh. Uh-huh. What? What if the voice ends up being Dr. Martinez? <laughs> no! Uh. <laughs> But, no. like, think about it. Don't ruin that for me. No, I don't want it. <laughs> she, like, figures out who Max is when she, like, goes to visit. And the voice popped up after Dr. Martinez realized who they were. Because Jeb seems too That's obvious. True. How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. This is this is offensive. Maybe it's yeah. Ella because she's 12 or whatever. No. That would oh, make more yeah. sense. <laughs> there you go. Maybe. <laughs> Oh, I hate it. <laughs> oh, thanks. I hate it. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> wow, you've both brought something absolutely terrible to the podcast. <laughs> You're today. welcome. I appreciate it. Everything's mm-hmm. great. <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk about the rats yet? The <laughs> Is rats. <it> early? <laughs> Let's talk about rats, baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I made a Hannah cough. <laughs> gonna die she liked my song too much <laughs> <laughs> i do like talking that rats is the yeah thing. but do you think that if you could read your rat's mind <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, what language would they be speaking mm. would it just be skitters would it be english Whoa. would it be spanish what a good question <laughs> these are i won't lie bonjour je m'appelle un rat <laughs> Yeah. I have thought about this more than a normal human being, probably. This is your because... Roman Empire. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. My, no. Mine is probably actually, no. The Anyways. Roman Empire? The Roman no, Empire. I was going to say Anne Boleyn. I think about the Tudors a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways. <laughs> That's not what I was going with this. <laughs> But I do think about a lot. If you could read an animal's mind, yeah, yeah, what would it even say? Like, if you read a what dog's would mind, would it just be like, whoa, whoa, whoa? <laughs> like, what would you get? Or like Totoro's mind? Nothing yeah. in there. You couldn't read. There's nothing in There's there. There's nothing happening in there. <laughs> you would, you'd hear a tumbleweed rolling by. <laughs> But, like, this has actually <laughs> plagued me even before this book. And so yeah. when, like, yeah, when Angel's like, oh, yeah, I can read the rat's minds, too. It brought it all back because, again, my brain. But what what are you reading in the rat's minds? Yeah. What are they thinking? Well, obviously, I think they were thinking that they wanted to bite them. But then that implies that rats know how to speak English. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like what? So anytime I think about the superpower of like being able to talk to animals or whatever, yeah, I think that part of the superpower is just translation or interpretation. Yeah, I know, like a tongue spell in D anD. I know, like, like they're like, probably seems like that's the boring is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's no, a boring I mean, superpower. Okay. Yeah, it is right. It, it's right. I don't think I don't think animals think in English. I yeah. don't think they do either. Does that help? <laughs> yes, and I know that. But then my brain is but, like, but how? Sam's right though, because like if you think about it, right? Like we think in English, but like a French person probably uh-huh. thinks in French. So a uh-huh. crow probably thinks in crow noises. That's you know? what I'm saying. Like, but I think dude, we yeah. talked about this with Edward Cullen, though, unfortunately. And I think it uh-huh. depends on if the person is thinking in, like, words or in, like, visuals and concepts, you know? Because some people have a mental voice mm, yeah, we and some people don't. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And so I think the answer here is rats are thinking in an internal visual. And that's visual? why Angel can... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not in visual. Rats have poor vision. <laughs> They're Probably thinking in smells. In smells. So see? Okay. <laughs> yeah. But then how does that work? Because, yeah. like, our yeah. our brains obviously aren't as attuned to, like, smell as a rat's would be. So could your... This is so hypothetical, but, like... Yeah. <laughs> We've gone several <laughs> steps into hypothetical at this so, point. So far into it. I, yeah. Anyways, if Angel's reading this rat's mind, which is mostly thinking in smells as far as, like, how its brain is deciding what to do next. Yeah. 
is angels well obviously it is because she's reading their brain but it's like a human brain might not be able to comprehend what the rat is smelling because it ha- it its sense of smell is so different to ours am i making sense yeah yeah, yeah. okay but- i think she's probably picking up on the rat's interpretation of its sensory input more than the actual sensory input itself yeah and it right? seems like yeah. the thought like the thought she's picking up is that they're going to bite the bird kids and it's like that's like a physical right like yeah, that's not a, a very smell. simple idea yeah so maybe she can read like intent i don't know <laughs> yeah yeah i feel like if we had gotten more than half of a sentence about this that would have been nice <laughs> yeah also like of the rats i have met who have all been hannah's there's only like yeah one of them who would like go out of their way to bite people yeah <laughs> like why are they approaching to bite like that doesn't <laughs> i don't think they would be yeah although like i know rats in the wild in particular can be very aggressive mm-hmm. and regularly kill things that are bigger than them yeah and they also like they're very curious Although they have little hands, so they will usually, like, touch things with their hands. But I would imagine it's probably similar to the way that, like, sharks will bite things. Because they're like, what is this? I should see what it is. And they do that with their teeth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I imagine these rats are probably not thinking maliciously, I want to bite that. But they're probably thinking, that smells like it could be food. Yeah. I want to taste it. A fun fact about rats is that uh, they can't vomit. Really? Which is why they're, yeah, which is why they're hard to poison. Because they are unable to vomit, if they come across a new food source, they will eat a tiny little bit and wait to see if they get sick. Wow. Uh. Mm-hmm. So if you try to poison a rat, it'll come up and be like, oh, what's this? And it'll eat like a tiny little bit of the poisoned food, realize it makes it sick, and then like tell everybody else. Uh, oh, but how does it tell everybody <laughs> else? <laughs> uh as Sophie might be able to attest, um, they do scream at each other. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, do they? I don't know a lot about rats, yeah. honestly. I was in... like, do they have vocal sounds that they make? Oh, my God. They have so in many little, little rat they? words okay. <laughs> that Angel yeah. can understand. <laughs> yeah. So do you think they think in these vocal sounds, too? Like, do you think their brain just, like, has these, like, yelling sometimes <laughs> where they're just like, ah, poison? No what idea. Rat? <laughs> Probably. I need to know. Something that is interesting in this idea is uh, because my experience is all with domestic rats that's kind of what i'm thinking of but like domestic rats are smart and like dogs and cats are able to learn what english words mean so i wonder if like you were listening to say sophie's cat's thoughts yeah and it was just like meh, 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 ham meh, 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 meh. <laughs> <laughs> Would they make those, like, associations with English words? Like, when someone's speaking a language you don't speak, and then they say, like, McDonald's, and you're like, I know what that is. I <laughs> yeah. know that. <laughs> I do feel like if you read a dog's mind, there would be some, like, English or, like, just, uh, or French or Spanish, yeah. whatever language the owners was uh, using. Yeah. I, I, I think yes, but I don't know. It's, it's hard, because sometimes with dogs... It's. I feel like it's more tone they understand, mm-hmm. or like they'll understand mm-hmm. like signs, like sign language or something. Mm-hmm. But then there are some that will fully know the difference. Like you have to spell out treat or walk because they get so excited <laughs> at specific words, and then they also realize what spelling it out means. Dogs oh, are very yeah. smart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our family dog learned uh, what feed the dog meant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, see? It's like, that's a whole sentence. That's a whole sentence. <laughs> so you just imagine a dog after you saying, feed the dog, and it's in its brain just being like, feed the dog, feed the dog, feed the dog, feed the dog. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's the only thought that happens. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess, oh, we haven't had the confirmation that Angel can hear fish thoughts yet, right? That's I, I want to no, know what fish something thoughts are. Something that we're I hypothesizing. <laughs> I feel like fish thoughts are even more simple than happy dog thoughts. Yeah. I was going to say, well, now we have confirmation of two animals, but I forgot that we had just, like, decided that it was Angel who can talk to fish. I mean, technically, pushing my fake glasses on my nose. Yeah. uh, She can hear rats and humans, which are two animals. Yeah, you're right. You're right. (laughs) That's true. I guess if she can hear rats and and humans, can she hear only mammals or vertebrates? Yep. We'll have to wait and see. Fishes? We'll have to wait and see. What is the... I feel like <laughs> it's the phylogenetic. Is she listening? Probably not bacteria, because she would be distracted. I was going to say, oh I God, feel like it's so going to be like vertebrae. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah. maybe she'll come across a squid, 
And then that will, uh, yeah, it'll be vertebrae. I thrust don't want to know what a squid is thinking. But then maybe what if crabs and lobsters too? I don't want to know what they're thinking either. They're mean. <laughs> Just vengeance is what vengeance. they're thinking. Vengeance. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think logically she's going to have, oh, oh, she wasn't with them for the bird part. I was going to say, can she hear birds? <laughs> She must be able to hear she's birds, part right? She's got to be able to. Yeah. Got to be. And she wasn't there with the Ferruginous Hawks, so no. we don't know yet. Yeah. Still we vertebrae, though. So I, my money's on vertebrae, but if there's a crab or a squid or an octopus that comes in, I feel like- I was like, going to say, yeah. I think it's going to be the very weird regular person definition of animal. Yeah. Where it's like, exactly. yeah. she'll be able to talk to an octopus, but not like- a bryzoan or something like yeah a clam you know like she yeah she just, it'll be like whatever people think are animals yeah she won't be able to talk to a bug yeah but yeah. she will be able to talk to a bird yeah but, oh, she but won't i want her be able to, talk to talk to a to... slug yeah me too i anything <laughs> with eyes interesting <laughs> is what she'll probably be yeah. able to talk to because that's what yeah. matters Hmm. Imagine talking to an anemone. I wonder what they would have to say. What about we also fish? vengeance? <laughs> <laughs> I will eat anything you put in front of yeah. me. I don't care if it's edible or not. Exactly. I once had to take a clipboard away from one that was trying to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> a clipboard? Yeah. Was yeah. it like at the top of the tank? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that one tried to eat everything. I had to pull an entire peanut butter jar out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> The peanut butter jar did have like crab legs in it or something, so it makes sense. But it was supposed to be for the octopus to open, <laughs> uh-huh. and the anemone. And the anemone, and the anemone like, shockingly, like, yeah. uh-huh. I did what kind of want to leave the peanut butter jar there, sl- like loosened, just to be like, I kind of want to see this anemone open this peanut butter jar <laughs> and figure it out. <laughs> that would be so interesting. It'd be like, wow, this anemone opened. A complex puzzle, much like an octopus. Except then, we, then we'd have to do anemone enrichment. No, and then, no. <laughs> there are so many anemones. I already everywhere. had to go in and hand feed them so many times. Don't tell me I have to enrich them too. Target, train the anemones. You'll be there for no. like fifteen hours while it I wanders slowly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it inches up the wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh my anyway. God. <laughs> well, I love that we're talking about this in present tense, too. Like the, <laughs> yeah. The scenario is so real to us much, that we feel like we're there. Much like Max, our perception of reality has become skewed, unstuck in time. Unstuck in time. Yeah. But stuck to the acrylic like an anemone. Yeah. Um, I do want to say something from right before the rats, which is that Max, I, I can't tell, has a hallucination that, yeah. that she's on a translucent platform above the sewers oh yeah yeah i had to read that one a couple times because i got confused yeah and it's like the voice is trying to teach her to trust herself or something like that like she's like oh i can see myself down there anyway the important part here is that she's standing on a translucent platform suspended high over the sewer system and she like got scared because she (laughs) was off balance and like high up up high (laughs) and i was like yeah can't can bird kids be scared of heights? I was like, can't you fly? Like, yeah. if you fall off of this platform, you could just fly away. Like, I'm like, I, I don't think. <laughs> Maybe there's not enough space for her to open her wings. Maybe. So, like... Yeah, but she did it in that restaurant. Surely there's more oh. space in this, like, underground sewer multi-level uh-huh. business than business. in a restaurant. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Because she's suspended high over the sewer system. Yeah, it was just like, I read it once and was like, wait, that doesn't make any sense. And then I read it again. And then like the third time I was like, wait, how is she afraid of heights? (laughs) Yeah. The first time I was like, why is she afraid of heights? And also, why are they suddenly on a catwalk? And then I was like, oh, she's dissociating. (laughs) Uh, I mean, she is like for almost the first time, I think, in this book, like, repeatedly admitting to being confused and terrified yeah so she could just be like losing it yeah and forgets that she's not afraid of heights you know because it's like oh my god things keep changing i can't keep up with it suddenly i'm up here what the hell yeah and if it's like a hallucination it could just be that like part of the hallucination is that she's afraid you know like yeah because it does sound like at the beginning of like the last chapter 
she's just like inexplicably afraid. Like she doesn't yeah. know why. She's just like, I'm just very afraid right now. And so it could be that this is another thing where part of this hallucination she's having is just fear. <laughs> Yeah, she's spontaneously developed anxiety. Which is good. Great. Yeah, what? I mean, it happens when you're 14. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel so bad for Max. Oh my god, I feel so bad for her. I... She's having a really hard time. Yeah, like, no wonder she's worried that she is approaching her expiration date. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, the wording is a little, like, ooh. But... I mean, appropriate for Max, yeah. obviously, but, like, yikes. Didn't they refer to it? That's what they called it at the school. Maybe. With like, I think that, like they've definitely talked about that before. Like I think the erasers have expiration dates, as horrible as that yeah. sounds. They they have those manufactured date types. Yeah. That's awful. It is. It's so fun. This is like when I was reading the list of like drugs that could induce schizophrenia like things and i was like cool yeah these children were probably exposed to all kinds of wild drugs yeah in these experiments great anyway <laughs> anyway yeah i do appreciate how max like copes through humor yeah i mean it's probably Relatable. not a good thing but it's more entertaining to read for sure yeah like she makes a joke about how like she's following the feelings that the voice is giving her because like the feng shui was right you know ugh and that they all have great vision in the dark, especially Iggy. And it's like, okay, this is funny. This like, I'm sorry that Max is absolutely losing yeah. her mind, but she's kind of funny about it. Yeah, I, I, it got a chuckle out of me when she says to Fang, like, you must be so tired of looking at me with concern. And I was like, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty funny. That's pretty good. That's something I would want to say. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I might use that eventually, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to hold on to that one. Yeah. And then no be one embarrassed about know. quoting Maximum Ride. <laughs> yeah. Especially not me. I'll have forgotten where it's from. And then I'll say it and someone will be like, wait, what is that from? And I'll be like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's Maximum Ride. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's, uh, it's from our podcast. Fine. Yeah, it's from our podcast. It's not from this book. From our podcast. No. Yeah. Just, just, this is just for me. Unless you guys can think of a reason for this. When they arrive at the door that The first Iggy, door, the second door, or the third door. The first door, door that Iggy <laughs> lockpicks their way into. Yeah. Fang says, yeah, this is what we needed. A staircase going down to the dark place. And dark place right. has capital D and capital P. I d do you oh. guys know what that is <laughs> referring to? <laughs> is that hell? Wait, oh, I'm going to Google. I didn't pick that up, but is that like, is it being capitalized because the dark place is hell and in the Bible? Like, literally, I have no idea because I Googled dark place hell. I like I tr Googled there are movies. <laughs> okay. The movies have all come out after this book. The dark place that lives rent free in my head is from the Alan Wake books. <laughs> Nope, not books, video games, of which there's a 13-minute song about it in the game. <laughs> oh, right. But I already <laughs> talked about it on one episode of this uh, podcast, so I won't talk about it again. But that was my first instinct. The other one is that there was a... I was literally just telling Hannah about this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was like a eight, like pretend 80s horror parody called Garth Marenghi's Dark Place, and it's like a pretend show like it's a pretend like lost show so it's pretending to be like lost footage of this show that was canceled about a place called dark place hospital and it's so bad and so funny purposely <laughs> bad um and i looked it up this show came out in 2004 oh. and it is the only oh. thing that i can find <laughs> about the dark place in 2004 so mm -hmm. i'm choosing to believe that fang watched the entirety of this show when it came out <laughs> <laughs> that is that's believable <laughs> yeah but i want it to be hell but I, <laughs> it does not seem like the bible ever references hell as a dark as the right? dark place no but that's only from my that. quick googling and there's a bible somewhere in this room with me and i refuse to read it so i will not look <laughs> for it it's like three feet away from you you could pick it up and go through every single page fuck no yeah for sure <laughs> but like the fact that it's capitalized, like that, yeah, that's weird. What is it? Is is there some sort of James Patterson nineteen sixty eight uh, reference that we don't know about? Maybe, but uh, probably. 
actually. Yeah, I don't know. I got stuck on The Bad Place. Oh, yeah. From the show The Good Place. Yeah. Which A, is not the same thing, and B, came out much later, so it's not that, but I couldn't get past it. Yeah, that's fair. It's just, like, a dark place as, like, a re- reference to, like, oh, I'm going, you're ending up in a dark place, you know? It's like, okay, that yeah. is something, but, like, why is it capitalized? Yeah. <laughs> why is it capitalized? Why is it <laughs> My only guess is that maybe it is supposed to be, like, another word for hell but do do religious people capitalize hell i don't think so. yeah do yeah they? i think they do yeah it's oh, okay. a proper okay. noun okay no yeah. that's why i'm asking i genuinely but i don't feel like know. they would just say hell no well yeah. they're kids so maybe not because like i don't know what you guys but i was raised at... double hockey sticks <laughs> yeah like oh, hell is yeah. a bad word right <laughs> like that was a swear when I was a kid. Yeah, I was raised that saying something sucked was a bad word, so like I'm not yeah, same. <laughs> a good. I was also. Yeah. Oh really? I oh I could say something sucked. I don't think I was told that it was a bad like I don't think it was a swear word, but it was like rude. So I yeah. Oh, that's say it. I was not allowed to say that. <laughs> yeah, I was okay. not allowed to say it either. I don't know. I can't say much because I was saying fuck by twelve. So <laughs> oh. <laughs> My mom and aunts were ruthless. Also a swear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm not a judge of that. But I was raised that, like, uh, like I was obviously raised Knowing... that fuck is a bad word, but hell yeah. was also, like, a bad word. Yeah. Yeah, hell's a swear word. Like, you, we could get away with heck, but yeah. hell yeah. was bad, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, heck is okay. I was busy learning French swear words like tabernacle. <laughs> tabernacle! <laughs> Callis. Callis. But what if, because they don't want to say hell, like mm-hmm. like it's stairway to hell, so they're saying like, stairway yeah. to a dark place. Like, I I think, I feel like that's what they're going for, but also- I appreciate what? the research you did, though. Like, that kind of, it's fun. <laughs> it could be that. I, yeah, I just wanted to talk about Alan Wake again is the secret there. <laughs> but also, I was weirded out that it was capital D and capital P. Like, why? <laughs> Yeah, I didn't pick up on that. I just thought it was a pop culture reference that I didn't get and did not have the energy to care about. <laughs> yeah. Apparently the reference is Garth Marenghi's Dark Place, which is an extremely niche <laughs> cult. Yeah. That is... Classic, I guess. And Fang has seen it? Fang watched all of it, I guess. Mm. Hmm. I have to support that it's just another word to say hell because of my religious theory. But, I mean, I think you're... Sophie's idea is more fun. For <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> well, the good news is is that we can both be right because Dark Place Hospital is set over the very gates of hell. Oh, oh. canonically. Okay, <laughs> in the show canon. <laughs> I think I think this is a hell reference. Yeah, I think it's a hell reference through Garth Marenghi's Dark Place. Yeah, there we go. We can both be right. <laughs> <laughs> that's the most elaborate okay. god i hope his ghostwriter is like a big fan and that's why <laughs> this reference is in funny. here anyway she just doesn't even realize that this is such a niche yeah, yeah. reference she's like yeah garth murray's dark place everyone's favorite everybody it's knows like, no one's ever seen it <laughs> nope okay anyway can we can we on? move on <laughs> can we move on from the dark place uh, uh i guess not because they don't move on only if alan wake writes us out of it that's how it works okay that's that's a reference spoiler, for everyone else who isn't in this podcast okay <laughs> i like that iggy picks locks as like a hobby yeah somebody has to in your gang yeah. of five children <laughs> in your gang of miscreants yeah I feel like as the uh, resident Iggy apologist because I, I love a cranky teen. I guess. Him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like. But okay. Yeah, but <laughs> I guess apologist is the wrong word. Um, unnecessarily a fan of. Yeah. I like that he had like more than one thing that he did in these chapters. That yeah. was nice for me to enjoy. He like picked the lock. He did some co- cool blind things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stand by that statement? No. <laughs> no. 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 I think maybe what you were trying to say is that I appreciated the attention to detail in the part where they're yeah. walking through the dark and they mentioned that like Iggy had his like finger slung through uh Fang's like belt loop. <laughs> his belt loop. I liked that, yes. Like I just like things like that where they're like, we're remembering that 
there is a scenario here that we need to pay yeah. attention to. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I like it when it's about how all the kids take care of each other. I'm ill. You can't call me out like this today. <laughs> Which Hannah likes a lot in a normal way. <laughs> Just in a totally regular normal way. Yeah, it's it, it is a regular normal way for your brain. <laughs> For the found brain family brain that latches on to these sorts of things like a, an anemone <laughs> yeah like an iggy holding on to fangs Perhaps belt like loop. An <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah much like iggy holding on to fangs belt loop also max knows that iggy must have his lock pick picking kit um that was hard even though she confiscated it for forever months ago when he broke into her closet at their yeah. house what do we think was in her closet? Didn't they steal her pants to make a bomb with? Oh, oh. Yeah, they did do something like <laughs> I think that. they did. Yeah, that makes sense. That was yep. Like, I feel like this is actually a callback to the canon. <laughs> You're correct. I forgot. <laughs> Weird that you would forget when we read it probably a year ago. <laughs> yeah, listen, my brain is full of <laughs> plague, <laughs> phlegm. <laughs> I almost said parasites, which I certainly hope it's not. Oh, no. <laughs> I also hope it's not. I was just That would be really us. unfortunate. Yeah, you would also have my parasite. I don't want that. Sharing is caring. Thanks. No, thanks. <laughs> no, thanks. That was actually why I invited you over. It's because no. of parasites. I was trying to modify my behavior. <laughs> That's okay. It's probably toxoplasmosis, and I probably have that already. <laughs> That's true. You probably gave it to me, and I'm allergic cat to disease. cats. Yeah. So I'm probably also allergic to the cat disease. This all makes sense now. Yeah. Anyway, they enter this lab, which has a thick yes. carpet in it. Which has carpet? <laughs> which is a weird choice. What the hell? <laughs> Why is there carpet in this lab? Why is no there lab carpet would in the lab? ever have carpet. No lab even no. has cloth chairs. Yeah, because no. like of chemicals like every chair has to be a certain material like this is stupid no laboratory would ever have carpet i'm done right? just like not just carpet thick carpet into thick which carpet. max's shoes sink it would never yeah. happen ever. also never happen even if this like even if this isn't the lab room you know maybe it's just like this is the the hallway outside this is where the door to the sewer leads like yeah you're gonna yeah. walk in from the disgusting sewer into carpet and that's no sort of your building choice no <laughs> there would be a whole disinfectant room it's it's wrong yeah. it's all wrong it's wrong you'll it's have to step wrong. in the vercon so anyways wash your hands foot bath oh my god yeah um, yeah to be fair Maybe this is just the like neighborhood and situation I grew up in. Every house in the early 2000s was fully carpeted, though. So maybe this is just also the office buildings are carpeted. Back to that. <laughs> oh. I don't. Well, I I didn't go in offices in 2005, yeah. so I don't know. I don't think most of them have been updated since 2005, at least, and most of them seem to not have carpet as like a good choice. Yeah, or they have that like really small carpet. My brain is turning the off. The small carpet. The small, you know, the not, small I was carpet. carpet. I'm to try and help you, but I was like, I want to know what Hannah says. <laughs> you know the 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 small, the small carpet. Small... Yeah, like a short carpet. <laughs> it's, like, it's like really small. <laughs> yeah, it's small. It's more something. like a mat <laughs> than a carpet. Yeah, yeah. In texture, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, I get it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The kind that you can almost wipe down. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Like it's been trodden over so many times that it's basically just yeah. the floor. Like it's just so small. <laughs> it's just so small. <laughs> just the smallest little just carpet. So small. Anyway, <laughs> yes. Small, like small in thickness, you know? <laughs> so so thin. Like thin? You, yeah, thin. <laughs> uh, sorry, the reason you can't hear Hannah laughing is because she coughed a lot. <laughs> I'm dying. Uh, uh, anyway. Where were we? <laughs> yeah, what were we talking about? <laughs> I don't know, but have we done enough? <laughs> have we done enough of this? I think uh, not really, but... <laughs> the thing that I found especially horrifying about the second of these three doors... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that the way they fucking opened it is the three oldest kids grip the edge of the door with their fingernails oh, God, and pull, yeah. which Ow. I hate so yeah. deeply. 
that's up there with eyeballs and teeth. Yeah, they have really strong talons instead of fingernails. They that's do, why. Yeah. Like birds do. Yeah, like it makes sense that they have bird. All this bits. time we've imagining just regular human hands, but they just have like talons on the talons. end of each finger. Yeah. <laughs> so regular. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted everyone else to be aware of the fact Thanks. that they are opening very heavy doors with their fingernails because I have to be aware of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I hate it. Now that I'm thinking about it. So does everyone it. else. Yeah. I made you think about eyeballs, I guess. So I this is yeah, only you fair. This. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I deserve this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they must just have like really strong fingernails because the alternative is horrifying. Yeah. Bad to think about. Bad to think about. Oh, also the voice just leaves. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, again, I'm just my theory that Jeb is sort of a wild card. He's like put this thing in Max's brain. Maybe his actual boss doesn't know about it. So he had to leave when Max arrived in the Institute. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how he's talking to her. Does he have like a walkie talkie that he. I don't think it's talks Jeb. I guess we'll get to it. <sighs> I don't really think it is either. We'll find out. Or we won't. Just because. It's so annoying about yeah. her being the chosen one. I think it's Jeb. I'm standing by that I think it's Jeb, but I will find out. It would be a lot yeah. worse if it was Dr. Martinez. I would be so mad about it. I'm not saying that I fully think it's her, <laughs> but yeah. I don't think it's Jeb. You think it's someone, yeah. I think it's either someone we haven't met yet. Like, it's going to be a complete wild card. Could be Dr. Martinez. Yeah. That could be fun. Yeah, I don't know. I think, like, Jeb is the obvious answer, but maybe that's what they're going for, so who knows? I mean, nothing in this book is subtle. It's yeah. true. So. so maybe it is Jeb. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it, it is Jeb. Jeb. Maybe I, I just want to be surprised. I want <laughs> yeah. the you twist. Want a twist. Didn't we talk about before about how we think there's some powerful woman involved? Yeah. Dr. Martinez. So maybe it's her. <laughs> maybe it's her. Absolutely not. <laughs> I don't think it's Dr. Martinez, but, uh, you know, I could be wrong. It could be, yeah. Because maybe she's just running the show from Whoa. the secret base with her daughter wow. because she doesn't want them to know about her daughter, but she's still running the show. Dang. Yeah. The betrayal, though. The Damn. betrayal. Of a vet. <laughs> think about it. Those cookies were made of betrayal. <laughs> a vet. Secret vet yep. office. I'm yep. just saying. The vet office. Yeah, for sure. Wow. I mean, everyone knows vets are the most sinister profession. Nefarious. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, maybe we'll find out in the next chapters, which we can guess about <laughs> what's going to happen. I had like a bolt of lightning memory from oh. the end of this book that I can't decide if I should guess it to surprise or if I should let you guys be surprised, because um, I think it's going to be in the next couple chapters. What do you okay. What do you think? I kind of I kind of want to know what you think is going to happen. It's just like one character introduction, not related to anything we've woman? talked about before. Mm. Okay, I'm just going to say it. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm trying to like guess and why. <laughs> do you remember that they get a fucking superpower dog? No. Um, I don't think so. No they memory. Get a I want a dog. superpower dog. Is it like an eraser gone wrong? Oh, that's no. Never mind. No, it's like a fucking... Oh, that's upsetting. The eraser start as humans. Okay. Little dog. Okay. Wow. And I remembered it because while I was reading this book, someone said the word total. And I was like, the dog is named total. Wait. <laughs> Wait. No, this yeah. isn't ringing. No, no bells for me. No bells. They no. get a little white dog, and he has, like, basically every superpower. I'm pretty sure he can fly. Can he talk? I think he can laser beam. I don't know. <laughs> mm. I want a laser beam dog. I think he can I talk don't. later. That sounds terrible. <laughs> I think that happens. Anyway, that was something I remembered, so I'm pretty sure that's going to happen in the next couple of chapters in the Institute. Wow. They're going to find him. Anyway, now I will read the first sentence of the next chapters for you guys, <laughs> so you can guess what's going to happen. <laughs> okay. Chapter 125. Your sentence is, holy crap, Fang said, stunned. Whoa. Whoa. Language, Fang. Language. Language. Holy H-E double hockey sticks. Holy H-E double hockey sticks. Uh, he's surprised that they are finally progressing the plot. Yeah, probably. Oh Isn't he, like, mostly dead? <laughs> he's, like, on... I think he's recovered somehow. Yeah. They have super healing. It's been, like, 24 hours. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> super healing powers. Yeah. Have we established that that's true? 
I think it is. I, d- I don't remember. I don't anything. think it's if I don't think it's been established, but I think there's enough um support in the text of how yeah. quickly yeah. they bounce back that they have to have some sort of super healing. Yeah. I'm reading um books where the characters do have super healing mm-hmm. and I'm getting confused. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. I mean, I would believe it. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Good guess, I think. The <laughs> chapter 126. Your sentence is, I stared at Nudge and she opened her eyes slowly. Okay. Yep. Uh, What's happening? Um, she's developing a superpower oh, spontaneously? No, I think there's going to be people oh. like in the rooms and mm. someone's going to knock Nudge out. I don't know. Mm. Maybe. Or maybe they're back in cages. No. No. It's been less fun. <laughs> yeah. Less fun. But. Stop putting children in cages. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm just guessing. Just guessing. We'll sign a petition. Yeah. No putting children in cages. No putting bird kids in cages. <laughs> You've got three mm-hmm. signatures, at least. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter 127. Um, your sentence is, The gas man was standing by a fabric-covered wall, and with typical curiosity, he had pulled the fabric aside. They're, they're, it's going to be like cloning vats or something. Yeah, yeah. Why is there so much fabric in these labs? <laughs> Lab. <laughs> Why? A great point. Do you That's know a really how much good question, formalin Sam. is probably in that fucking tapestry that he just touched? Oh my god! Someone's that job is just to, like take down these fabric like curtains or whatever the hell, and just like wash them every day. Like that's someone's job. <laughs> yeah, just so that they could pull it aside in this one sentence. Uh huh. That's so uh, gross. The people Yuck. who wrote this book have never worked in a lab in their life. I can't believe Sam yeah, is yeah, implying <laughs> that they are putting these mutant children in formalin. <laughs> no, but I mean every lab dealing with specimens or anything like that yeah. has formalin. It's like I bet they have some siblings in formalin <laughs> somewhere. I yeah, I wouldn't be surprised either. Uh, yeah. There's some failed experiment yeah. that is in formalin somewhere. The frog one from earlier. Yeah. Oh. The really anyway. Boy. <laughs> Continue. Continue. Uh, your... <laughs> okay. Your <laughs> sentence is, I couldn't speak. Neither There's can a period, I. so. S- same. <laughs> same. Mess. I have no words. <laughs> Whoa, what's funny is that the sentence from the previous chapter was a really long one, and uh-huh. There's only about four other sentences in that chapter because <laughs> it's so short. And then this one has the shortest possible starting sentences, but it's like a page and a half long. <laughs> mm. Wow. Lengthy. Wow. Well, she has no words because she's also not happy Informal about how much in. fabric <laughs> there is in these labs. <laughs> yeah. She's yeah. like, I couldn't speak. There's yet another source of fabric <laughs> that has safety. to be cleaned. <laughs> I couldn't speak the fumes from all of the chemicals absorbed in the fabric that has taken away my voice. I couldn't speak. There was shag carpet across the ceiling as well. Oh my god. <laughs> That's the next sentence. No. Yep. I just a poll. Once stayed in a cottage that had um in Quebec with that had a indoor pool and the pool okay. had carpet all around it. And up the walls. That's disgusting. And on the ceiling. <laughs> that is that's really disgusting. So gross. Like, oh my right? god. Like, ew. why like, would they do that? That's such like a from thing? the 70s, right? Because carpet it was like a thing be. in the 70s, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Is this a tabarnak car- Kalis situation? Yeah, definitely. No, it was a group of us all rented it and went, and that was one of one of many reasons that we ended up calling it the 70s sex cabin, just based <laughs> on the decor. <laughs> Accurate. The, the bathrooms all yeah. have red lights in them. Oh my god! Of normal really? lights. Yeah, that's what you want. Oh. I guess. Uh, yeah, it was. Someone was wants that, surely. What you want for sure. Anyway, that was a diversion. How about we talk about what else we're reading that we're enjoying? We're reading. Wait, that's that we're enjoying reading <laughs> sentences. Yeah. No, you got it. <laughs> I got it on the second try, and that's what matters. Well, since the last recording, I have on audiobook read almost all of the murderbot <laughs> diaries and i am obsessed uh-huh. uh i i read so many of them i swear because they were only like three hours long each audiobook because i listened to them at one time speed because i was enjoying them so much you li- you listen to like three in one day yeah because they're three hours 
Yeah. Look, normally I listen to audiobooks uh-huh. at 1.75 speed, so clearly I liked these ones if I was yeah. listening to them at the normal amount. Anyway, I'm a huge fan. I'm obsessed with them. And I think I also read, oh, That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon, the book club book. I had fun. It was fun. Yeah. It was yeah. Fun. yeah. It was a fun time. I rated it lower than I will probably end up rating it in the long run because it was fun. But yeah, that's all. Yeah, I, I mean, it's not like it. literature, but <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> that's not why I was reading it. <laughs> I was not reading no, it for I had a good literature. Time. <laughs> I also had a good time. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> Let's say that a few more times. <laughs> um, anyway, that's what I've read. What about you guys? <laughs> I am currently not experiencing any joy from any of the books I'm reading. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm still reading, like, all the same things from the last episode. I I mean, I started two Star Wars books. I guess that kind of counts. Yeah. Yeah, and they're both pretty mid, but it's fine. Yeah, (laughs) I agree. (laughs) Yeah, like, I I will say the Star Wars audiobooks really are what make those really good, but Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the content in both of these, I'm just kind of just, like, meh. But I've just been feeling that way about Star Wars a lot recently, so it could just be a me issue. But yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm in a little bit of a slump. It's been a bad reading month. It's not Aww. not not a good reading month for Sam, even though I've read 19 books this year alone. <laughs> so like, <laughs> it it's fine. But yeah, I haven't I haven't had a great March. <laughs> Speed so. is not the problem. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's I don't have anything else to say, so I'm going to give it to Hannah. <laughs> All right. I read the third book or listened to the third book in the Green Creek series by TJ Klune, and unfortunately, it was written specifically for me and I'm never going to get over it. <laughs> um so now I'm currently listening to the fourth book in that series, which is equally delightful in my opinion. <laughs> what else am I reading? Oh yeah, and I'm uh reading what I think will be the last book in my Imperial March endeavor, uh which is Bloodline by Claudia Gray. I think that one's pretty good so far. She does a good Leia characterization, which I appreciate. But I, like Sam, have also been percolating some thoughts about Star Wars novels. <laughs> there. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I've just had thoughts about what they've been doing with Star Wars recently. And, like, I still mm. haven't watched the Ahsoka show. So that's kind of where it's I'm at. It's because it's not about Ahsoka. It was supposed to. Anyway, I have opinions <laughs> on that, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as a Rebels fan girl, I have a lot of opinions about the Ahsoka I show. very much love Rebels as well. So I yeah, like I don't know. It's yeah. just it's all just yeah. kind of missing, you know? It's just uh, yeah, for sure. Anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need to get it to Star Wars. Sophie might leave. No, we super don't. Yeah, I was just gonna say I was doing Imperial March by reading all of the Murderbot diaries, which is like Star Wars. So I could talk about that at yeah. the same time that you guys are talking about Star Wars if you want that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> but see, I'm also reading the Expanse series, which is sci-fi, and it's not giving either. So that's fair. I'm losing on all fronts here. Nothing no. is bringing me joy <laughs> in books. <laughs> oh, no. It's okay. I'm just going to go read Bride by Ali Hazelwood, and hopefully that'll fix me. Hell yeah. Yeah. You, you know what else you could try reading? You could try reading what? our April. Oh, yeah. Our, our April. Yeah. <laughs> like book, midlight book club book. Yeah. yeah. Which <laughs> is going to be The Fragile Threads of Power by V.E. Schwab. Woo. Because despite the fact that we all loved the Shades of Magic series and this book came out last year, none of us have read it yet. Yeah. Listen. <laughs> I have a lot of books to read. That's why we're I have making so it many a book books. club book. We're going to force Sam to do what she said this year and read some sequels. <laughs> this Is this technically a book one, though? Because it's a second oh, yeah, trilogy true. in the same I world. I think it's technically a it's book one. It's technically a book one. Okay, but do you both have it on your physical TBR? I do. No. <laughs> okay, well, Sam does. So. I do. <laughs> I have the audiobook, though. Anyway, if you liked this chapter of Midlight Crisis... Please consider rating and reviewing us on Spotify or your podcatcher of choice. You can talk to us and find fun-related content on social media. We are at Midlight Pod on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Tumblr, and Blue Sky. And all chapters of the show thus far are available on our website, midlightpod.podbean.com, and on YouTube. And Max, empathizing with us when faced with the raw audio of every episode of this podcast... There was
was a pause. A long one. Really agonizing. <laughs> the worst. 